Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll introduce you to one of history's most famous menswear figures, Beau Brummel, and answer the question of just why he was so stylish. <laughs> When it comes to historical menswear, few names rank higher than that of George Bryan Beau Brummel, the English dandy, gentleman of leisure, and, in a way, menswear influencer. We suspect that if it had been around in 1810, Beau Brummel would have been all over Instagram and maybe even TikTok. During his time, Brummel was a genuine tastemaker whose views on menswear would influence fashion and whose style would resonate for years to come. Not only is he credited with popularizing many of the conventions of classic menswear, but his fascinating life also provided ample material for countless short stories, books, films, and TV shows, in particular a 1954 film adaptation starring Stuart Granger and Elizabeth Taylor. And throughout the years, advertising has traded on his reputation of cleanliness, fastidiousness, and modishness. Although, ironically, Beau Brummel himself probably wouldn't have been a big fan of these particular ties. Beau Brummel may have lived over 175 years ago, but his influence on menswear can still be felt today. After all, how many influencers do you know who have a statue on London's German Street? To go deeper, though, it only makes sense to start from the beginning, so let's dive into Brummel's early years. In keeping with our belief that a gentleman is made by the choices of his life and not the circumstances of his birth, we should note that Beau Brummel didn't come from a traditionally aristocratic background. Still, Brummel's father, William, was a private secretary to Lord Frederick North, member of the British Parliament and Prime Minister of Great Britain from 1770 to 1782. Thanks to hard work and useful connections, the Brummel family enjoyed a solidly middle-class lifestyle, but the family patriarch wanted more for young Beau and his brother, also named William. He wanted them to be gentlemen, and here we mean gentlemen in its historic sense, entitled wealthy men of privilege. Both Beau and William were educated at Eton, an elite English boarding school, where Beau showed an early penchant for developing new takes on fashion. For example, he took the white cravat traditionally worn by Eton students of the time and accessorized it with a gold buckle. Brummel was a mediocre student, but he developed a flair for wit and comedic timing, which made him a favorite of both his classmates and his teachers. Returning to our social media analogy then, Brummel's tweets probably would have gone viral most of the time. He later attended the prestigious Oxford University, but he left after just one term. Just like a modern influencer, Brummel wanted to focus on developing his personal brand, so he set his books aside and ventured out into the real world. When Brummel's father died, then 16-year-old Beau inherited a considerable fortune of between 20 and 30,000 pounds, equal to multiple millions of pounds today. But while this sum was impressive, it wasn't enough for Beau, who wanted to ascend to the very apex of the social ladder, le bon temps. This is a French phrase that literally means well-mannered, but it also referred at the time to the cream of English society. As you can see in this French caricature of the period, the gentlemen of Le Bon Temps were noted for their exuberant style and foppish dress. So, if Brummel, the son of a private secretary, was to flock with peacocks like these, he needed a friend upon whom he could depend. And lucky for him, he found one of the most powerful friends in the land, George Augustus Frederick, the Prince of Wales, future Prince Regent, and later King George IV. Shortly before his father's death, Brummel had the idea to enlist in the cavalry, specifically the 10th Royal Hussars, the favored regiment of the Prince of Wales. Brummel hoped then that this appointment would give him the opportunity to meet with the regiment's royal patron. 
Brummel's greatest military exploit was getting kicked in the face by a horse, which broke his nose, but he still did manage to make a good impression on the Prince of Wales through his wit and style. Thus, he was able to secure a promotion from the lowest enlisted rank of cornet to lieutenant. <clears throat> Sorry, for our viewers across the pond, I mean lieutenant. And later, to captain. But British regiments at this time rotated their garrisons from town to town, and when the 10th Royal Hussars were sent to the relatively sleepy town of Manchester in 1797, Brummel decided to drop out of the military and go to London instead. By resigning his commission like this, Brummel was essentially doing the same thing as a modern influencer when they quit their job and moved to Los Angeles. And it was here that his days as a style influencer truly began, as in London, Brummel experienced the height of his popularity. And again, due to his close friendship with the Prince of Wales, Brummel was able to climb the social ladder even faster than he had risen in the British military. Thanks to his innate sense of style and mastery of the conventions of taste, Brummel was able to devise new and innovative forms of fashion. And thanks to his powerful friendship, these new forms of dress were soon adopted by English gentlemen across the country. Brummel is best remembered today for his involvement in a fashion revolution known as the Great Male Renunciation. Previous to this movement, fashionable men's clothes were much more flamboyant, being heavily influenced by the French court. They often featured things like elaborate wigs, white hair powder, perfume, ornate silks, and knee breeches with stockings. But Brummel and other supporters of the Great Male Renunciation believed in renouncing this ostentation. Instead, they wore looks featuring natural, unadorned hair, long trousers worn with boots, and coats that didn't feature much ornamentation. In doing so, Brummel rejected the showy and decadent ensembles that obscured or exaggerated the male physique and illustrated the value of simple but elegant garments that complemented and enhanced the masculine figure. Brummel was famous for ensembles that combined simple and flattering cuts and exquisite tailoring with impeccable craftsmanship and high quality but not gaudy materials. The previously popular flowing silk or velvet coats with gold and pearl buttons and ribbons or lace, heavily embroidered waistcoats, neck ruffs and jabots, and culottes gave way to more sedate jackets in fine wool cut closer to the body with plain shirts, waistcoats, and cravats, full trousers, and boots or evening shoes. On that note then, here's a breakdown of Brummel's most common looks. His standard day attire consisted of a blue coat known as bath coating, often wool, with a buff waistcoat, off-white linen shirt with a white cravat, buckskin trousers, and dark riding boots. In the evening, he often wore a blue coat as well with a white or black waistcoat, black trousers that ended at the ankle, striped silk socks, and black slippers. As a bit of background here, the vogue for continental styles, especially from France, that had gripped England for decades, had been broken by the violence of the French Revolution and by English wars against Napoleon Bonaparte. Meanwhile, Brummel was assembling a homegrown British fashion movement in which he adapted and perfected many of the already existing forms of British dress. The boots, buckskin trousers, and use of wool all evoked country wear, which remains an important part of British tailoring even to this day. Brummel's variation on the tailcoat, and especially its use of brass buttons, was popularly worn at Eton. The classic menswear pairing of blue and buff was already commonly known as the colors of the Whig political party. 
and a cravat worn high on the neck had been popularized in France after the revolution as the more ostentatious ruffs and jabots had fallen out of favor as the necks that wore them were subjected to the guillotine. Even the streamlined silhouette and muted colors of Brummel's style were meant to echo the subtle dynamism of statuary from classical Greece, which was in vogue at the time because of the Enlightenment's renewed interest in neoclassicism and Hellenism. So consider how the hybrid menswear looks we see today, like an English Glen check pattern in an unstructured Italian-style jacket with an American-style denim shirt, represent a continuation of Brummel's style by taking the best aspects of different cultural approaches to menswear and making of them a global synthesis. Brummel understood the timeless versatility of clothing that represented an understated elegance and had a disdain for anything that was over the top. This was partly achieved by establishing a limited range of appropriate colors, and the color theory for combining them through contrast, as we still do when pairing the colors of blue, brown, and gray in various combinations today. Brummel's styling would influence the historical development of the modern suit, but it would even more directly influence the sport coat and trouser combination, as Brummel preferred not to match his coat with his trousers. Brummel also emphasized neckwear as the ornamental center of attention in an outfit, which continues with bow ties and neckties today. His efforts helped to enshrine high contrast black and white as the colors of evening formal wear that we still observe, while formal morning dress with its long morning coat and contrasting trousers, along with a lightly colored waistcoat, most directly follows the Regency attire that Brummel himself actually wore. Many of the behaviors and conventions of the menswear connoisseurs of today also directly follow on from Beau Brummel. He utilized bespoke clothing to get the exact details that he desired, and he employed the services of multiple tailors for different garments in which they specialized. He also artfully sought to carefully arrange every last detail of his outfit to, ironically, give it a nonchalant appearance. For example, it was commonly said that Brummel would spend hours arranging his neckwear just to make it look as though he had casually tied it at a moment's notice. This, of course, is very similar to the ways in which modern gentlemen do things like spending considerable amount of time getting their pocket square in their breast pocket to make it look as though it was only placed there casually. Thus, Brummel was actually a forerunner of what is today known as sprezzatura, in other words, spending a great deal of effort to make it look as though no effort was put in at all. I wonder what the YouTube algorithm would make of Beau Brummel's three-hour-long How to Tie a Cravat video. Luckily for you, our version comes in at just under seven minutes, which we hope is much more manageable. And returning to the notion of Brummel's tweets, his musings and maxims on menswear were actually collected by his followers and were sometimes known as Brummelisms. One in particular is actually still repeated as advice even in the present day. If John Bull turns around to look at you, you are not well dressed, but either too stiff, too tight, or too fashionable. This has been taken as a warning against dressing too ostentatiously in a way that is only meant to be noticed by others. Although Brummel's own fame ironically depended on the fact that his mode of dress would be noticed, along with his wit, of course. Well, I failed to create a king, but I did teach society to wash its hair and wear clean linen. I'm not at all sure which is the most important. And unfortunately, just like any number of modern menswear gatekeepers or internet trolls, Brummel was able to maintain his prominent position at least somewhat by insulting others. He did this from his post at the ground floor bow window of White's Club in London, which would later become known as the bow window. From here, Brummel would cruelly pass judgment on the attire of men walking by. 
essentially a more traditional but no more refined version of scrolling through Instagram and leaving mean comments. It was even said that in the summer of 1813, Brummel was finally cancelled after he made a joke about the weight of the former Prince of Wales, then the Prince Regent, after he failed to acknowledge Brummel at a party. It's probably more true, though, that the estrangement between the two men can be traced to political differences over time. Meanwhile, Brummel's metaphorical decline in fortunes can be traced to his literal decline in fortune. His extravagant spending and reckless gambling habits caused him to accrue, allegedly, over 600,000 pounds of debt. To put that number in perspective, a middle-class family of the time could comfortably live on 300 pounds a year. In 1816, Brummel escaped his debtors by fleeing to France, where he quickly accrued even more debt despite his English friends' attempts to help him. Brummel spent a few months in a French prison in 1835, and by this time the syphilis that he had contracted earlier in life had really begun to take a toll on his mental health. Finally, in 1840, Beau Brummel, one of the greatest influencers and tastemakers of his day, died penniless, insane, and forgotten in a French sanitarium. And you thought social media influencers today had drastic falls from grace. Of course, Brummel wasn't completely forgotten. And on that note, we hope that you've enjoyed this introduction we've presented today and learned a few things about his importance in the development of modern menswear. And while we don't agree with his views on gentlemanly privilege or snobbery, we do agree that his perspectives on understated elegance, the importance of fit, and attention to detail remain just as relevant today as they were in his time. So, did we do a good job highlighting how Beau Brummel's life and career mirrored that of a modern influencer? And if so, would you like, comment, and subscribe to him? Let us know in the comments section below. In today's video, I'm wearing an outfit that is inspired by some of the most popular illustrations of Beau Brummel and what he commonly wore. Of course, it's centered around the colors of blue, brown, and white, and accordingly, my double-breasted blazer is in navy blue and features gold buttons. My shirt is plain white, and into its French cuffs I've got inserted our yellow gold-plated sterling silver monkey's fist knot cufflinks to harmonize directly with the blazer buttons. My trousers are in a light khaki or buff color, and my shoes aren't black as I thought that would be a bit extreme, but instead a very dark brown. They're Adelaide-styled cap-toe oxfords with broguing from the Swedish brand Skolix. All of my remaining accessories are also from Fort Belvedere, and I'll start here with my ascot in buff, which features a Macclesfield Neats pattern in blue, orange, and red. This, of course, is a bit different from the style of ascot that Beau Brummel himself wore, but I figured it was appropriate to include here. Meanwhile, my two-toned shadow-striped socks are in navy blue and yellow. My pocket square is in plain white linen and features a P monogram, and my boutonniere is our yellow exotic Caribbean. My only hope is that Brummel would be complimentary of my outfit if I were to pass by the bow window today. And because of the styles championed by Brummel and his contemporaries, I've decided not to put any product in my hair today and go for a more natural style. And of course, you can find all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing in today's outfit, including my socks, cufflinks, pocket square, boutonniere, and neckwear, as well as a wide variety of other men's accessories by visiting the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs> Thank you.